Well, meanwhile, some global energy and natural resource experts are already sounding the alarm about climate change restrictions, citing a current global food supply shortage. The critics say restrictions on natural gas production, while meant to stave off the negative effects of climate change, are forcing the agriculture industry to cut back just when more food is vitally needed. And News Nation's Paul Gerke joins us live from outside the UN. Paul, what else is clogging up the food supply chain? Nicole, I don't know if you took Greek mythology in high school, but the Hydra was a serpent with many heads. And every time Hercules would slice one off, two more would grow in its place. That's the global food insecurity crisis in a nutshell right now. It's a complex situation, and some of the solutions actually create more problems. First, I want to give you an idea of the scope. According to the United Nations World Food Program Outlook, last year, hunger levels surpassed all previous records. Nearly 193 million people were food insecure, in need of urgent assistance, nearly 40 million more than just the year prior. Tens of millions faced emergency conditions. More than half a million human beings were coping with a catastrophe, which is starvation and death. So why is this happening and what can we do about it? Well, let's talk about the heads on that hydra. There are three big ones, climate, conflict and crops. It's no secret that climate changes have created harsh growing conditions in many parts of the world. We're coping with historic droughts and hundred year floods. Some of the things we could do to improve crop production, like churning out and exporting more natural gas, would help temporarily, but ultimately fly in the face of the climate goals we're trying to meet to avoid making this problem worse. Global supply chains that have been strained since the pandemic can't necessarily get food where it needs to be, especially in the Middle East and Asia because of the ongoing war between Ukraine and Russia. Those two countries, as you may have heard, produce 15% of the world's wheat, but 30% of the world's wheat exports. They're also major producers of corn, barley, and sunflower oil. Grain ships just started leaving Ukrainian ports this month after being stuck there since February. Some harvesting this year's crop are wondering where they're even going to put it. And elsewhere, farmers are struggling to pay for fertilizer. Prices have tripled this year since Russia is one of the main exporters of its main ingredients. So in summary, we have harsh climate conditions limiting food production, energy policies that may ease the strain but not fix things, war forcing a rework of the global supply chain, and food and fertilizer prices getting out of whack as a result, which means people are going hungry. And this comes at a time that the global population is around 8 billion people, more mouths to feed than ever in human history. In the coming decades, it's going to become absolutely imperative that we find more ways to grow food and more efficient ways to do it to feed a growing population. Nicole? Yeah, absolutely. We certainly need the food. Okay. Paul, thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.